our first task was to go along and carefully chip away the perimeter mortar and take the panels out. It was quite stressful because you normally, you normally, frankly, work as a small team in solitude, but there's such interest in the glass at the vine. I looked over my shoulder and there's at least, at least 20 people watching my every move and you could have heard a, a pin drop in there. It was, yeah, it was different. At the same time as we took the glass out, we put in an, uh, an external glazing screen to protect it, which is leaded to the primary lead lines of the original glass. And then we make bronze frames for the perimeters of the ancient glass, and it sits slightly in front of the original position. Cycles of condensation are the primary enemy of delicate paint on ancient glass, and that new exterior screen takes all the brunt of the weather and the condensation. We bring the glass back to the workshop and we evaluate the condition of particularly the glass paint. This glass at the vine is quite delicate. It's never been fired to an exceedingly high temperature, so it will scratch off if you touch it with a scalpel tip, for instance. For the most delicate areas, all that we'll do is use a very soft brush to remove surface debris and remove it with a vacuum cleaner. And for the slightly more stubborn deposits of dirt and cement around the edges of the glass, we're just using cotton wool buds and um, ethanol and water. When you've got such an important uh, late medieval artifact, you need to take steps to protect it for future generations because you run the real risk that you'll turn a corner and, and there will be irreversible damage done. And we've got a whole range of people on the team here from younger people to older people and uh, it's quite interesting you know that right across the generations people feel this great need and responsibility to prolong things for the future.